everyone, and welcome back to Jesse Heck Creative. We are back at Collecticon this year, 2023. Let's a go. So get ready with your questions here once we're ready for that. Um, my first question for you guys. Uh, what's your best behind the scenes story? Behind the scenes story? Maybe maybe a favorite con moment? That one. That That's could good. be the one. Okay, so one of my first uh, conventions, I had a guy come up to me in a like see-through leotard. But I don't think he knew it was see-through. And then he proposed to me with like a like a ring out of a like a fake ring. <laughs> was it a ring? Pop? I don't think it was a real proposal, but it was quite the moment, and I'll never forget it. I just want to hear what you saw. I was a little confused. I was like, is this on purpose? This see-through, or is this a, like it's too tight? You know what I mean? Wow. Well, weird that you didn't marry him. I know, it should have been a sign from the Destined. gods, it was meant to be. <laughs> yeah, she didn't like what she saw. Talk about a courtship move. That could have been part of it. <laughs> oh man, I can't think of anything right now. But, oh, one time I got to direct Miss Karen. I was just going to say, directing me! Directing you. <laughs> More oh, I was I just like, I was just like scrolling through, like, no direction needed. But you <laughs> told me I was pretty. That you are pretty. Aww. Thank you. She like, oh is so God, pretty. You. you guys are hot. <laughs> okay, I have a funny behind the scenes moment. I was doing a show and there was a little girl. It was her first job. And she didn't know that she could go to the bathroom. Oh, no. And she was like eight, you know, and she was standing at the mic. And it was just like her line. Like, you know, in the act, when before COVID, we were all in the studios together. And if you have a room where everyone's standing up, in between your lines, you're sitting down. So she was standing up in the middle of like a U of actors looking at her. And she's in the middle of the room at the mic going, I'm doing it, I'm doing it, I'm doing it. And she was. She was peeing on the floor. No, it's like being on the New York City subway. <laughs> oh she was doing it. Poor thing. Was uh, it carpet? Yeah. Get rid of those stage fright early. <laughs> yep, scarred for life. Poor thing. Oh, Never saw her again. Cute. Everyone was It'd be so funny like, if someone came out. It was me. <laughs> Anyone here be in the studio? Be ten years later. Yeah, we have a teenager here. <laughs> <laughs> but we all have stories like that. That first accident. Um, all right. So the next question: If you could be any animated character ever, who would it be? You mean in real life? Yeah. Oh. Any oh, animated real character life. ever? Well, in their cartoon, whatever works. Does it have to be anime? No, it could be any animated character. I mean, I wouldn't mind being Wonder Woman. I think it would be fun if we did like like into the Spider Verse, but with like Wonder Women, and we could all be Wonder Woman. That would be amazing. Wouldn't that be awesome? Is this your fantasy? Kind of. Okay, I'm into it. We could all be invisible jet together. We could lasso each other. Okay, <laughs> not that kind of crowd, girl. It's 18. Hold it for later. It's PG PG. We could lasso each. Other. <laughs> I just, I want a, I want a problem-free life. I want to relax. I want to be Cramorant from Pokemon <laughs> so I can have my own church dedicated to me. Oh, Every oh, Sunday on TikTok, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Wow. There he is, that's oh, him. There you go. <laughs> that's him. That's who I want to be. You're already close enough to our Lord and Savior. Not a thought between those eyes. Not a single thought. Not a that single thought. That is the thought. cutest picture of you. I love it. Yeah. Aw, thank you. I took it myself. Yeah, you can self-defense with a gold missile, too. I think I gotta go Raven. Yeah, what the heck? I put people in portals, get my alone time whenever I want, super go. magical, I can hang out with the lasso chicks. Yeah, that's good. Keep away from the end of the world. All right.
right. Uh, so, go from that, what character was the most difficult to voice for you? It could be any level of difficulty. I guess we could answer that in so many different ways, right? We could answer, like, vocal health. We could answer, like, uh, if it was difficult to connect and stuff. I guess I would say... Oh, I'll, I'll answer quickly both ways. Um, Luffy and Wabafet were difficult on me vocally, but I learned how to, like, keep my voice by vocalizing certain uh, singing trills uh, between takes, like... <laughs> My engineers got really annoyed, but then I would leave with the voice that I came in with. And um, I don't know. The other one would be Blaze the Cat, and that would just be because um, she was really complex and we had a lot of people in the room. You know, sometimes there's a lot more people making decisions and you're trying to layer your performance. And when there's more people in there, they have more to say. It takes a little bit longer to get to the meat of what they, they want and what you want together. So at the beginning, that was like a little more difficult to develop. Also, because she was kind of close to home, I'll call it, you know? Things that are further away is like what's easier for me and what's um, more palatable. But yeah, those were two of my stories. What about you guys? You would never even know I'm in this game, but Minecraft Legends, I played pigs. And I played pigs, and it was the most vocally stressful thing I've ever done in my life. Wait, in the Minecraft in game, Minecraft, you're the pigs? I'm the pigs. I'm the one that goes, Wee! They're like, now die like that. I'm like, Wee! <laughs> oh my god, I never knew that. I feel like I've heard that a million times. My yeah. kids played oh, that forever. Yay. Wow. Minecraft pigs. Okay. Very painful. By the way, I think we're the Powerpuff Girls right now. Oh, wait. Oh, oh my god. I, I was saying that wait, before. Wait, wait. I was going to ask you guys to color coordinate because <laughs> we got lots oh of bubbles and buttercup. Yay! <laughs> Oh my god! It's fantastic. fantastic. The real life Powerpuff Girls, folks. Yeah, we oh, yeah. So cute. And we're all the greatest girls at the party. <laughs> I think vocally, the hardest for me was Terrence from Foster's Home. Just because he was always so mean. And, um, you know, like Erica was saying, you learn how to navigate doing a challenging voice without hurting yourself. It's like you find a new route to take, right? Um, but with Terrence, there wasn't any breaks between him being a dick. You know, it was always like, you're a loser. <laughs> it was always so deep. So I guess vocally, that would be the most challenging. But also, I would do it again. So, you know. You got that teenage adolescent voice change. That's awesome. Um, all right, we got one more question here, and then we're going to go ahead and open up to audience questions. So feel free to start lining up here. Otherwise, I'll keep asking. Um, Guys, Chucky's in the audience They were right ready. There. Super ready. I'm All right, so our last question. Um, what's the best impression you can do? Oh my god. How's that if we voice? Do you know what you want to say? I mean, I only really have one impression, and it's this one. I don't even know if you guys know this. <laughs> That's it. You're I have no to. idea if I could do any of them right now because, like, I'm so vocally <laughs> exhausted. I'm sure. But an interesting one was I used to do all the twiddle bugs. So, like, from um, Ernie and Bert's garden, you know, oh. the little garden box, so, I know we will walk in the rain, was the guy, and then the, the mom was like, I know we will walk in the rain, and then the little girl was like, I know we will walk in the rain, and then the little boy was like, I know we will walk in the rain. But I found out they were actually men sped up. Wait a second. Give yeah. her a round of applause. That was dope. <laughs> that was so yeah. good. I used to like all Did you just watch Sesame Street, Sesame Street and say, I want to be those wormy characters? You want to be them? I want to be everyone from Sesame Street. <laughs> oh, so cute. Like, I love all the Sesame Street characters. I love that. I know you probably do a lot of impressions. Well, my best is Rosie Perez. Oh. Everyone's like, is she going to do it? <laughs> Are you allowed to? <laughs> Did you guys see why a man can't jump? Can't hear, yeah? 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 Okay. I was just remembering a line that doesn't have a swear word in it. <laughs> ah, Billy, you're so stupid. You should have said I love you infinity plus infinity. What is a quince? It's a fool that starts with the letter Q, Billy. Jeopardy is gonna call. Thank you. Applause. Incredible. That is incredible. Thank you, thank you. Right. Counting for his Christina. The only one I got is, oh my god, you look like the 4th of July. It makes me want a hot dog real bad. Oh, that's good, that's 
good. Give it up for Jennifer Coolidge. Good. Good. <laughs> I can do Mickey Mouse. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh boy. Hot dog. Nice okay. work at Disney. All right. Well, with that, let's go and open up to some audience questions. Our first person, come on up here. Hello everyone, and thank you so much for watching so far. Make sure to click like, subscribe, share, and leave a comment. You can also click the bell icon for more creativity. Now let's get back to it. I got one for uh, Erica. Um, who would win in a duel? <laughs> your My Valentine or Akiza Zinsky? Oh no, you're pitting me up against myself? Oh gosh, no matter what I say, no one's gonna be happy. Or I, I guess I should say half of you will be happy. I'm gonna have to go with Akiza. I'm gonna have to go with Akiza. Yeah, I mean, because there's so many reasons why, right? I don't know, but don't be disappointed, my people. <laughs> Thank you so much. Good answer. Got Luffy. Hi, obviously, my question's for Eric. It was awesome meeting you yesterday. Um, I just wanted to know what was your hardest or most emotional moment voice in Gosh, I mean, there have been so many, but it's been a long time, you know, since I was the voice actor for Luffy. Um, I'm gonna spin that, and I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about one of the one of the really fun moments that was unusual and kind of odd, if that's all right. I remember um, when I remember voicing Little Luffy. That was like such a fun episode for me, and um, I remember when he got caught in the jar and stuff, and like. We have rules as voice actors. We're not really supposed to do our own special effects. You know, if we're underwater, they're supposed to put an effect on it. Or if we're in a jar, they're supposed to put an effect on it. But back in the day, they would let me at least attempt everything myself. You know what I mean? So I'd be like, I'm talking in a jar. And I would talk inside my mouth. So that one they kept. And then like if I talk underwater, I don't know if you guys like to put like a little bit of water in your mouth and like, Tip your, tip your head back and talk. So and there was just a lot of really fun little tricks that I got to do and also just the fact that the voice was different and, and cute and like kind of spunky and see what he sounded like when he was young. Um, that was just a particular very fun episode for me to voice. And one last good question. Uh, it's an inside joke between me and my friends for Little Luffy when he does the yo. Could you possibly do that? What does he say? He, he, little high, he goes, yo, can you possibly do that one? Yo! <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for the question. Okay, I have like three full questions, like one for each of you. Okay, so for Tara, um, I know you're the voice of Ben Tennyson. Like, how did you find the voice for that? Because I know you primarily like voice a lot of female characters. Like, how did you find the voice for like male characters? Actually, you know, most of the most famous like 10 year old boy characters are played with women like us because our voices don't change. You know, Chowder probably could have gone on forever if Nikki's voice hadn't changed. So, um, and I think, correct me if I'm wrong, we're just better at sounding authentically like young boys, you know? It's not as forced. And also, if you listen to 10, 10 year old girls and 10 year old boys, you're not really gonna be able to tell them apart. So I think that's why a woman's voice kind of sits in that pocket. And when I was auditioning for Ben 10, they just wanted him like a little older and cooler than Timmy. So, cause you never want to do like the same voice on two different shows or you try not to anyway. So Timmy Turner was up here and then Ben 10 was like going hero. So it was like the same sort of little rasp in the back, which is typically what we do to make it sound more boyish. But honestly, just as many girls have raspy voices at 10. But anyway, he was just a pitch a little bit lower and also mentally, right? When you say, how do you pick a character? We kind of like see who we are in our minds and imagine where they are and what they're doing. So when you see the world as like a, sort of a little immature Timmy Turner, as opposed to like a more badass superhero guy, that acting sort of lends itself to the change without even thinking, what am I doing like with the mechanics? I'm thinking with my acting brain. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so now for Christina, like I, yes. I saw the, Miraculous Ladybug movie on Netflix over the summer. It was like really good. I just want to know, like, the songs are amazing. Why didn't you and Bryce do the singing voice for Ladybug and Noir? I don't know. <laughs> I know, it's absurd. Yeah. Next time, we gotta tell everyone 
needs to be them, right? Yeah, and like a lastly for Erica, I'm like, oh, you voice like so many Pokemon characters. And like I, I saw on your like poster here, like you did Nurse Joy, like I forgot when was that? Because like I've seen like a lot of Pokemon episodes, like I don't remember. Sure. What my head. Megan Hollix had moved to Los Angeles and I took over for her, I auditioned for her. At the same time, I was auditioning for her for my Valentine. I don't even know if I knew it was the same woman that did both. Um, it's funny because I've been answering this question for a long time and I always say season six, seven, and eight, but then I was corrected at <laughs> the last convention I was at. They were like, no, no, it was just six and seven or something. And I was like, okay, <laughs> I believe you. Sometimes we forget things, but yes, I was the second nurse joined. I think there's been like nine or 10 of us at this point now. It's crazy, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, hon. Awesome. Nice awesome. to see you again. Just for the sake of time, guys, we're gonna cut down to one question per person, all right? We got a good line to go through. Thank uh, you. Quick question for Tara. What do you think of the idea of Psy Twy wearing the Omnitrix? Psy Twy wearing the Omnitrix? Yeah. Tricks? Yeah. I can't speak anymore. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a great idea. You wanna pitch it to producers? You want me to get you a meeting? They all have on the tricks. Exactly. Where do they put them? Like on the front? Oh, is the equestrian girls? Yeah. So they are ponies that become girls that they can become aliens? Yeah. You're a genius! Exactly. They got to be equestrian girls. <laughs> That'd be great. Yeah. Yes! Girl. I'm all in. All right, thank you, Tara. Okay, bye. Thanks. That's an impressive idea. Yeah. Hi, Tara. I'm a big fan of the Venti series. Um, I, my question is, uh, what was your most favorite thing about uh, being fan and what happened in 2005? Um, so my most favorite thing is the fans like you around the world, like it's really touched people around the world. Don't you guys think that's the best part about these characters? Because when we're doing them, we don't really know if people are going to like them or not. And Hollywood isn't the best at making us feel cherished. It isn't until we started coming to cons that you guys show us the love back, that we know you guys like what we do. So honestly, for me, number one is see how much it's touched people around the world. Like I went to the UK and Dubai and biggest Ben 10 fans. They have way more merch than we ever had. And people make their own on the tricks and it's inspired all kinds of cool art and gadgets and it's fun. And also it's like endless storylines, right? You can become an alien, go on these great adventures. And when you're a kid, I don't know, when you were kids, didn't you just imagine? We didn't have like iPads. <laughs> it was all in your imagination to go on these adventures. So, so to see it come to life so creatively was like really, really fun. It was, those are fun shows to do. And I don't know what happened in 2005 because I don't know, that's a long time ago. I don't remember, I don't know, I don't know. It was a great series and I got my opportunity. I see, you look amazing. Yeah, going hero. Who's your favorite alien? Uh, okay, I like it. Who's your classic? I like Heat Blast. Heat Blast. Ooh. Classics all around. Thank you so much. All right, for the sake of time, everybody, we're going to cut it off the line with our friend in the sunglasses and white back there. If you have any other questions, you can head to their booths in the back. They'll be there the rest of the day. stage I know that I mean it's not there's so many routes to getting here you know what I mean um, but acting comes first and I mean that's the most important thing get your acting training it's as you would with any degree if you're gonna be a pharmacist you go to school for pharmacy you get a degree and you, not that you have to have a degree but there are different ways to study you can go you can do improv on stage you can take um, voice acting classes you can um, get a degree in acting, a BFA or whatever. There's so many different ways, but all of it involves studying, you know, and understanding it. And obviously talent comes first. Talent comes first and instinct comes second and then third comes training. And it's really, it's important. And sometimes people learn on the job. That happens. There are some people who are just that, that talented that they get that and they learn on the job. But study and understand as much as you possibly can. Do you guys have anything to add to that? So hard. You could talk. I could talk about this for ten years. Yes. <laughs> Christina says yes. Thank you. Agreeable. Everyone, give it up for Mike, guy.
Thank you, my guy. We appreciate you. My favorite Sailor Guardian is Sailor Saturn because I love the color purple and I also like that she can just destroy the entire world whenever she wants to. <laughs> Who's your favorite? Thank you. That's a good choice. Hey, nice. She's my second favorite. Yeah. Thank you. So much. What is that? Oh, okay. And what's the tweet? when I was like in a contest with a friend and we were trying to get more followers and I said, I'm gonna post naked pictures of myself. And he said, I will too and we'll see. And that was like the prize. But of course, I've never posed naked for anything, FYI, if you see anything online. I just posted all my characters who generally don't have clothes on. <laughs> and I was like, oh, here's me completely naked. Oh God, and like it's hysterical. Twilight because she's pretty much always naked. That is so brilliant. So, Dear Princess Lestia, now you know it's just dumb. Your faithful student Twilight Sparkle. But who won? I won, duh. Because they thought there was going to be like a real payout and then I never did. <laughs> That's a good question. My guy! Yeah! Hello, good afternoon. Alright, what's up? Uh, question for Mrs. Strong. Uh, my sister heard that Craig McCracken was looking to reboot his version of the Powerpuff Girls. Are you going to return to the role of Bubbles? And if so, is he taking scripts? She has one. Um, I hope so, you know, because sometimes they make mistakes and don't bring the people back. Um, if they ask me to do it, I will absolutely do it because I love doing anything with Craig McCracken and, of course, the Powerpuff Girls. I don't think any of us would say no to a show that's being rebooted, right? Would you ever say no? No. Nope. If there's ever a moment where something we've done that you love gets recast, it's not because we're going, we want a million dollars, or we don't feel like doing it. We all love these characters as much as you do, so like, thanks for showing up, giving up all this love, and I don't have any way to deliver that script, but if she does and it gets made, that's super dope. <laughs> all right, thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you everyone so much for your questions. We're gonna cut it off at that. We ran out of time here, but if you have any more questions, please feel free to head back to their booths in the back for the rest of the day here. Give it up for Tara, Erica, and Christina. Thank you guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you all so much. And next up, we'll have Austin Tindall, so whoever wants to stick around for that. If you have any questions for Tokyo Ghoul fans out here, we'll be out in just a few minutes. Thank you so much for watching Jesse Heck Creative. Feel free to click like, subscribe, share, or leave a comment. You can also visit us at jessieheckcreative.com where you'll find more reviews like this one. Thanks again for watching and keep being creative. Stay tuned.